You know how something like the infamous Cheetah Men was obviously designed to be the first step in a series of licensed cash-ins? Everything from cartoons to action figures to breakfast cereals? Well, as soon as you boot up Defenders of Dinatron City and see all those trademark symbols next to the characters' names, you know exactly what this game was going for. It's for sure a sad attempt at fabricating the next Ninja Turtles, and it even had a Saturday morning cartoon pilot that bizarrely echoes the themes of atomic energy, gene enhancement, and utopian society found in future games like Fallout and Bioshock. Weird. Defenders of Dinatron City is set up like an adventure game, where you start with one of three characters. Jet Headstrong, who slowly shoots his own head, decap attack style. Miss Megawatt, who is pretty fast, shoots lightning, and is not married apparently. And Radium Dog, who is a, uh, dog? That looks like Superman's pet Crypto, but with an exaggerated bite that reminds me of when the dog puts on the mask and Jim Carrey's The Mask. I didn't realize until I died with Miss Megawatt, captured is what the screen reads, that you actually have three other characters to choose from, and you can switch to them at any time by pausing. I had no idea. So in addition to those original three dorks, there's also Toolbox, Buzzsaw Girl, and the award-winningly named Monkey Kid, a chimp that lobs exploding bananas at people. Classic. The game gives you pretty clear goals. Destroy a blimp, collect some stuff, after which you travel from street to street clearing out the evil robots. Once you've done this, you can enter some of the shop doors where you'll find more robots and some indistinct items you can only pick up 25% of the time. Defenders of Dinatron City was designed by Lucasfilm Games, who also made the Amazing Maniac Mansion, so you figure there's going to be lots of inventory-based puzzles here. But all I could figure out was that you just awkwardly destroy every enemy and then keep moving. On repeat. I can't shit on Defenders of Dinatron City too much. I mean, it's pretty ambitious in its scope and its use of multiple protagonists, but while the overall product is better than most, it's just not a very fun game. Most of these characters are either slow as shit or have an attack with a range so short that you have to be pantsing distance to kill an enemy. Seriously, pick the hammerhead guy, toolbox, and try to clear an entire screen of robots. You'll be very slowly falling robo bros and banging your head aimlessly for eternity. Only the two female characters, who are fast and use projectiles, are worth a damn. And even then, it's only half a damn. That's because the fighting area of each screen isn't just simple side-scrolling. It's set up like Streets of Rage or Golden Axe where you can move up and down as well as left and right. Unfortunately, this necessitates that you be the exact perfect same plane as the enemies in order to hit them, which is way easier said than done, yet they will for sure dun you way easier than said. On top of this, Dinatron has one of those Fester's Quest style guidance systems where you go down one way but end up somewhere entirely different than what is shown on the map. Simply pointing your character down the bottom of the level twice doesn't send you down two screens, it sends you down once and then back up once. It's fucking maddening. After what seems like an hour of eluding random enemies, walking down the same streets over and over and over, and generally having mixed success against your enemies, you realize that this game is timed. Timed. It's actually that whichever character is on screen when the time runs out gets trapped, but what's the point of this? Each hero already has separate Ninja Turtles style life bars. Why does there need to be a countdown that randomly kills whoever you happen to be controlling? That's bullshit. There's a lot to love about Defenders of Dinatron City. The music is great, the different characters with their quirky designs, contrasting play styles, and bonus power-ups give the gameplay some variety. The graphics are nothing special, but I'd at least put it above similar titles like Ghoul School or A Boy and His Blob. The main issue here, other than the awful combat, is that this isn't an adventure game. It wants to be, it presents itself as one, but it's just not. A proper adventure game can have combat and platforming and whatnot, but they're really about exploration. Acquiring items in your inventory and solving puzzles, usually with the random objects you're hoarding. Defenders of Dinatron City has none of that. Just play some other great adventure games on the NES like King's Quest V, the aforementioned Maniac Mansion, or Nightshade, and then come back to Defenders and you'll see exactly what I mean. If you took out the confusing street navigation and the unnecessary interior locations, Defenders of Dinatron City would just be a generic left to right scrolling double dragon clone where you beat up robots with your superhero buddies. And honestly, it might actually be more fun. I mean it wouldn't, because the game still plays like a cat chasing a laser pointer, but it'd at least be more honest.